Hi there, crafty friends. Welcome and thank you for joining me. My name is Melissa and today I thought we would make a birthday card using the Pretty Pink Posh Party Time stamp and die set. And we used this before, uh, just a couple of the images on our sandwich board card. But today we are going to be using this larger cake and present image along with the present and the balloons and the sentiment and the coordinating dies. And we will also be using the Honeybee Stamps Celebrate background. So I got this background quite a while ago and this is the reason that we are making this card. I wanted to use this background. So let's go ahead and get started. First, we need to heat emboss our sentiments here. I've got my heat gun a little bit warmed up. I'm hoping it's warmed up enough so it goes quickly. We want to hold that paper down in the corner. We're going to make sure that we powder up this paper here because we are going to heat emboss. So we're going to be using the Brutus Monroe Gilded. We've got our Versamark. We can just ink up our images. So now we can take a look at that and see what we got here. And I can see it, you probably can't, but I can see that ink on there. And it looks like we got really good coverage. So let's get this powdered up. And those images look like they are going to be perfect. I think that's nice and covered. I will go ahead and heat this up. And as soon as everything turns shiny, you know that your powder is melted. So let's set this one aside because we are going to color that one. Now we need to emboss our background. So I don't like it when there's powder on my work surface. So for that, I'm bringing in our larger Misty because this is a much larger stamp. So I've got a six by seven piece of paper here. And we're just going to make sure that that is in the corner. I do not want that moving because we will need to re-ink it a couple times just to make sure that we have good coverage. And for this one, we are going to ink this up in white embossing powder. Just get that on there, pick it up. And I forgot, I need to take out my foam mat in there because this is a red rubber stamp. So let's get our magnets back on there. Make sure that's good. I think that's good. And again, we want to use our powder. We will also be using our Versamark for this stamp. And I just want to make sure I get it on there really, really well. So we'll probably have to do this two, maybe three times. Let's see what we got. And you can see that ink on there. If you kind of tilt it, you'll know whether or not you got a good impression. Okay, so I think that's good. Now we can ink this up. Or actually powder this up. And I am using white. So we're doing white embossing powder on white paper because we will ink blend over it. Okay, so I'm not real sure if you can see all that powder on there or not, but we got a nice coating of powder. So let's heat this up. 
So I think I got that nice and heated up and I like to just tilt it in the light so I can make sure that all that powder is melted. And I'm not seeing any places that didn't melt really well. So we can set that aside and let that cool off. So let's go ahead and bring in our images. So now, oh, I don't like it when I have embossing powder on my work area. So now we can go ahead and color. I'm keeping it pretty simple. I'm going to do this one in pinks. And then I've got a couple browns, a light, a medium, and a darker, a yellow for my candles. And we're going to create this card here, but in pink. And I just love this because it's got so much sparkle. This reminded me of a card that I would give to a young girl, like a teenager, like just turning 13 or 14. It's got so much sparkle in there. And it is so cute. So we're just going to do basic coloring here. I'm going to start with my pink and that will be my main color. So I'm not going to do everything in pink, but I'm going to do a lot of things in pink. And you can see when you color inside of a heat embossed area, it really does help keep that ink inside the lines. So we're going to do a balloon. I'll do my little bow here. And we're just going to do accents. So there I've got my pink stun. I am going to go ahead and move on to my other colors. We're just using a variety of browns. I'm doing a chocolate cake. And then I will use my lighter browns for the presents and the balloons. And by using the lighter browns, I was kind of hoping that it would mimic gold. I wanted to mimic gold. Oops, and I just, gosh darn it, I got that brown in my pink. So what I like to do is I always keep I always keep my colorless blender on hand so I can move that ink back where it needs to be. And I'm just kind of pushing it. And then I will recolor that pink frosting and hope we didn't ruin it. I'll let that pink dry, move on to my brown down here and take my time a little more. Okay, so that has dried a little bit where I pushed that ink up. So now let's try to repair that. I'm just going to come back in with my pink and nobody will be the wiser. We were able to move that ink and it looks pretty darn good. And so we can just color in our other layers so the pinks are the same shade since they have more ink on them. Now I will move on to some of my browns. And just like that, we are all done coloring. That was so simple. I only used five colors here. I will have them listed in the description along with my colorless blender to kind of fix that mistake that I made. And it's a little visible, but you know what? I don't think it's gonna be that bad. So now we can put this aside and we need to ink blend on our white heat embossed panel just so we can see those letters on there, that wording. So let me bring back in my scratch paper that I had so I can tap off a little bit because I don't want this too dark. I want to be able to see the message, but I don't want it to distract from our colored images. So we're just going to add a little bit of ink on there. And I think that might be all right. Maybe just a little bit more through here. And it doesn't have to be perfectly even. We want some character in there with our shading heavier in, in other areas. 
but not all the way through. I think that's good. So then what we need to do is we need to bring in our rag and wipe that ink off of the heat embossing and then we can really see those words. And I think that's perfect. So now I need to trim this out. I am going to trim this to four and a quarter by five and a half because we're going to put a frame on that and I will die cut these images. So I got my panel trimmed out. I've cut out my images and I put foam tape on the back of those. And I actually love these foam strips for stuff like this because they're not too thick. I get these on Amazon and they work really, really well. So we've got our panel. Let's bring in our frame. For my frame, I die cut that out of just Michael's Recollection glitter paper. And I love how sparkly that is. And I used my Lawn Fawn stitched rectangle frames and I used the largest one. So you can barely see the stitching on there, but you can see it, it is there. So let's go ahead and place this and see if maybe we want our background a little bit darker or not. And you know what, I'm actually thinking that that is going to look pretty darn good just like that. So let's attach our frame. And for my frame on issues like this, I will just peel off two corners and bend that release paper back just like that. That way I can take this, I can place it, I can get my frame on there just perfect and push down on that corner. Then I can push down on the other corner and then pull out my release papers. And that frame is just sitting on there right where it needs to be. Because sometimes if you peel all of that release paper off at once and then try to do that, sometimes it'll be crooked and you won't get it, you know, how you want it. But I think that turned out perfect. So now let's go ahead and add this to a card base. I've got a regular card base already here. And now we can go ahead and add our elements. So I did put foam tape on the back of there. Let's just start peeling this off and adding these where we think they should go. And that is so cute. I think a young teenage girl would love this. We're not done yet. We have to add our embellishments. And for that, I am using the Pink Fresh Studio Glitter Drops. And this is in the color gold. And I am using these because it's just going to add so much more sparkle. And there we go. That was our last gem. And this came out so cute. I can't wait to send this to someone. I think it will really be liked. So we've got the pink one that we just did today. I showed you my blue version earlier in the video. And then I've also got one that I did in purple. And you know, I have to say, I'm not real sure which is my favorite. I think I like the pink but the sparkle on that is just amazing. It is so cute. Thank you so much for spending time with me. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.